Hey, welcome to Mountain Slayer Garage. Hey, today we're gonna to be talking about snowmobile wraps. Um, I really wasn't gonna make a snowmobile wrap in the last couple of months going to the snow shows and talking to some of the manufacturers, wrap companies, and looking online. There really isn't a good wrap video on how really to install a wrap, all the details. There's a couple of videos that kind of go over it in real basics. But if you wanna install your wrap and you've never done it before, it's something you definitely can do. But there's some things you want to be aware of when you're doing it. So we're going to go through a bunch of the details on that. Got my wrap the other day from Deven Inc. Um, pretty cool. Spent some time uh, designing this thing. We're going to put it on this matrix right here. Um, when I bought this sled, it had another wrap on it that wasn't, in my opinion, all that attractive. So you have to remember, if you're going to buy a wrap, at one point you're going to resell your snowmobile. Just, you have to buy a wrap that you think is going to appeal to a large majority of people. Otherwise, it's going to turn people off when you're go to resell your sled. So really kind of fun the last couple of years. You can uh, go on any of the websites on any of the wrap companies and build your wrap. I really like the DB and Inc. Um, website. Um, it's really cool because you can pick a lot of different colors. They have a whole bunch of different wraps. Also, the other thing that they have that I don't see any other wrap company have, you can go in and you can put logos on your machine. They have a whole bunch of different logos, um, different snowmobile companies from Climb to Polaris to Ice Age, you can place those anywhere on your wrap you want to on their on interactive online wrap builder. So a pretty cool DV and Inc. Uh, great wrap builder. Um, I really like it. It was really kind of fun building my wrap for this. Took a little while to kind of pick the one I wanted and, and then place all the logos on it that I wanted to. Uh, another really cool option they have too is you can put your name on it. Like if you have a business name or your snowmobile club name, you could print that out and you can place that anywhere on it on their interrap wrap builder on their website. So pretty cool. So a couple of things, I just have a jacket on. It's pretty freaking cold. Usually when I've installed wraps, it's been uh, fall and I've, the temperature has been a lot more conducive to installing a wrap. You really want to do this in a warmer environment. One, it's going to stick better if you're not trying to stick it to a snowmobile that's sitting out and when it's 35 degrees, it's probably not even 40 degrees here in my garage. It's pretty cold here in Salt Lake today. That's one thing you have to think about doing this in a warm environment. The plastic wrap itself, the vinyl wrap, is going to, you're going to have an easier time working with it if it's like room temperature, like 60 to 70 degrees, that says that in the directions. Um, when you buy a wrap from any wrap company, um, DV and Inc. has really good instructions on what to do. That's one of the things they say, install your wrap in a warm environment. So what we're gonna do with this sled is inst we're gonna take some of the plastics off and do it inside and uh, the hood and the side panels anyway. And then the rest of it, we're gonna have to be left doing it out here in the cold, but we'll probably put some heaters in and try and warm it up as best we can in here. You can, I've installed wraps on the machine. It makes it really nice because it holds everything in place, but where we're gonna install it in uh, my basement where I have the wrap laid out and the wrap's been down there getting warm in room temperature because you, you don't want the wrap at being at this temperature, 30 degrees when you're trying to install, it's just more difficult to work with. So uh, the tools you're gonna need for a wrap, you're not gonna need a lot to install it with, some kind of a heat gun. I know some people use hair dryers. This is a heat gun that I bought from Harbor Freight. It was pretty cheap, probably like 25, 30 bucks, different heat levels, it works really good. I've had it for a couple of years now. Uh, you're gonna want, a decent pair of scissors, a nice um, razor knife, because you're going to be probably trimming and cutting a few things, because a lot of the wraps don't fit 100% perfect. And if you don't have them laid down right on the flat surfaces really well, you don't want a little piece hanging over, you want to trim that. Otherwise, that's going to be a place where it might peel off and come off later. Uh, you want a nice well-lit room to do it in, so you can really see what you're doing to get the wrap on where it's supposed to be. And then the last thing is, a lot of people overlook, you want your machine to be super clean. The problem is if you go buy a new machine, a lot of these dealerships will slather your machine in the stuff that makes it look shiny, but it's also stuff like armor all that a wrap's not gonna stick very well. So make sure you clean it really, really good. And anything that's gonna keep a wrap from sticking, you wanna make sure it's washed off really well. So uh, soap and water on the Deven Inc. website, it talks about using a general amount of rubbing alcohol to really clean a lot of the oils off. I've tried different things in the past. Um, acetone has worked really good on the plastics for me to clean off the plastic, especially if you have sticky stuff on here from some of the factory stickers you took off. So anyway, make sure your plastic is super clean, super dry with no oil or residue on it of any kind before you try putting your wrap on. So we're gonna take the hood off, the side panels off, and we're gonna go down to my basement where I have my wrap laid out and we're gonna install the wrap on the hood and the side panels. We're gonna do the hood first. You wanna have a plan for how you're gonna ins install your wrap because as it unfolds, sometimes if you have some 
graphic going this way. If you don't install it correctly, the wrap that comes off the hood here isn't going to match the lines as it folds over to the side panel. So you want to do like first, and then so you can match this part up with the, with the hood, do the side panel. Then I like to flow to the back. You can install it in whichever way you want, but that's kind of what I like to do. Start with the hood, flow down the sides, and then flow to the back. So make sure all the lines and the graphics kind of match up um, when you do this. So let's go, we'll, we'll wrap the hood, and then we'll do the side panels, and then we'll come install those, and then we'll kind of work our way backwards. All right, so got a hood here, got our wrap. It's been laid out here in a 70 degree environment for a day, just letting everything kind of flatten out and all the vinyl relax. This is the install guide that comes with the Deviant Ink wrap. It's kind of, it's probably the most detailed guide I've seen. It's really nice. It gives you a good layout of where each piece is in the layout on the floor and where it goes on your machine. Um, which is really nice. I saw someone on social media, I think it was on Facebook, one of the channels a couple of weeks ago that had his wrap was cutting pieces all over his garage. He had some pieces laid out. They had no idea where they went. And so he went to social media and said, hey, anyone have this wrap that can show me where these pieces go because he didn't know where they go. And so Demon Eek is the best at that I've seen of all the major wraps that I've used of showing you where all the pieces go. Not only do they give you a really nice guide here, but also if you come over to the wrap itself, like we're going to do the hood first. If you come over here, you can see each piece is outlined in a different color. We got pink, and pink over here goes to, you can see pink over here goes to the windshield and headlights. Blue, which is this color, goes to the hood. And each piece has a different color around it that kind of gives you an idea of where it goes on your machine, which is really nice because you see I've got blue over here, but I've also got a blue piece over on this one and a blue piece over on that one and also blue over there. So I got blue in three different places. If that didn't tell me where they were go and the color coded, I would be confused because I got some side panel stuff over there, but there's some hood pieces over there. There's hood pieces over here. So they do a really nice job of letting you know where each piece goes exactly on the machine. So I really like the color coding. I've never seen another wrap company do anything like that to show you where the pieces are laid. So we're gonna come up here. We're gonna start out on this with the uh, top of this, work our way down the windshield and go to here. Now, the nice flat areas with like little corners, little angles like this are pretty easy to lay down. Where we're gonna run into trouble are right here, you can see on the windshield right here, there's this groove in the middle of it. And that's gonna be a problem area. Any place you have a low spot, you have to make sure you get that wrap stuck down in the lo that low spot. Because what's gonna happen is, I call it tenting, where the wrap doesn't stick down, you get a piece of wrap that's not stuck to anything. And what that, what's gonna happen is if we kind of do a cross section of this, see this is our, our windshield here and it's got that little low spot like that in it. If we put our wrap just stuck over the top of this like that and it's stuck there and it's stuck there but it's got this little cavity right here, what's gonna happen over time when this it goes through its heat and heat and cold cycles, this is eventually gonna contract and expand a number of times to where your wrap right here is gonna crack, or you're gonna have this crack down your wrap here, or anywhere there's a low spot where you have air underneath, and your wrap's gonna start looking like crap, and it's gonna start peeling there, you're gonna have problems. You have to make sure when you have a little low spot like that anywhere, you get that wrap stuck down that low spot. That's kind of one of the first things that we wanna go over, that one of the trickiest things is to get it to stick down on that low spot so we don't get this um, cracking in your wrap coming off. So we're gonna do the top part and work our way down this hood, and we'll show you how kind of how to do each piece when there's a tricky spot. The, the easy pieces are just the flat places. Now, if you're going to do this, you have to understand a wrap isn't something that you can just throw on in an hour or two, especially if you've never done it before. All right. Now, before we get started, you've probably seen wrap um, guys on uh, YouTube installing the wrap where they spray this wet coat on, they put it on wet, and they squeegee it all out. Really hard to do that on a snowmobile wrap because that's really for big, broad, flat surfaces. And they say in the instructions here to be better off putting this on dry, each piece on dry, not trying to use the wet method. So most of these pieces on this hood, you can just do by coming over here and finding it in your little, make sure your hands are clean and dry. And then most of these pieces you can just put on by, by just kind of eyeballing where it's gonna go really well and just kind of slowly placing it Make sure the tip's right there. And then this top corner, we'll just kind of lay that in. And then we'll kind of slowly just kind of work our way around the curvature of this. 
because you don't want to get any bubbles on it. And you can pull it up a little bit to kind of re-stick it if you get a bubble. And that's about as easy as it is to kind of do this. And then you can kind of just work your way down this direction. Like if I want my next piece, come over here and grab it, which is this piece right here. And I want to line up the marks here. If you have any kind of designs you want lined up so they look like they're where they're supposed to be. And also your gap in between each one just a little gap there and then I can pull this and you can kind of work this to try and keep your gap just kind of pull it where you want it and then put all the edges down so you don't have any bubbles or anything out so you see I got over here and I have this a little edge here so I'm gonna to have to use my razor knife just to cut this a little bit like that so it fits around this corner and then it's a little bit every once in a while you got to trim something like that just so that and lays down around this corner really nicely. So we're gonna do that and then I'm gonna do we're gonna show you how to do that piece with that low with that low spot. Line it up right about where we're gonna want it. Right down here we're gonna have a little bit of our corner here. And you see how I'm high here? So I can take I can unstick this and I can just bring it, kind of stretch it a little bit, bring it down so I have a nice gap all the way along. Now we want that to fit down in that little thing. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna heat it with our heat gun and kind of press it into the, the low spot. Because you really want that to fit down that low spot so you don't get any water under there, you don't have any air under there. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna work from this way that way. And just work that into that low spot as we go along. You can kind of see the edge of that low spot kind of showing up. Keep that a little bit more just so it, it really sticks all the way along down on that low spot and that way will that wrap will never have a problem there you can see we have that low spot all the way along that matches this low spot into our graphics so that's not going to come loose it's not going to crack we're not going to have any problems so we're going to keep covering this hood and if we run into any other problems we'll kind of show you but we're just going to start wrapping and then uh, sticking the wraps on most of this like i said is nice flat surfaces like up here um, every once in a while you're going to have a corner that you might want to cut and modify a little bit because the wraps, I haven't had a rung wrap company yet that's 100% perfect of fitting to the shape of your hood. They're all going to have a little piece here where you have to trim a little bit here or there to get it to look good. So um, let's, we're going to start just going down and wrapping the rest of this. Okay, ran into a couple other things I want to make you aware of. Anytime you're putting the wrap on, you have a little piece like this that doesn't quite where that hangs over. You don't just want to fold that and hope it sticks right there because it probably won't. And that's going to start cracking and peeling off too and start making your wrap look bad. So what you want to do is just take it with a X-Acto knife and just slice that little extra piece off instead of trying to wrap it around the corner. I've got that one there and I've got another piece where it comes up here where it just hangs over it that I just need to kind of peel those edges off. And that's gonna keep this wrap sticking on. Otherwise, these are gonna start, the hot and cold cycles that this sled's gonna go through, that stuff that's hanging over is gonna start peeling off and making the edge right there look really bad. So we wanna get rid of any of those edges that are hanging over like that. And then the last thing was, if you come over here, we talked about the low spots, like right here, we wanna make sure it sticks down in there. But also, whenever you have a high spot like this, there's this little piece of high spot in the plastic, you wanna hit that with a heat gun really good and push that around there so you don't have any air bubbles around those high spots in the plastic. So low spots like this, high spots like that, you wanna really work it in and get any air out because that could cause problems on that sticking there later.
pieces like this that fit over this rounded nose cone can be kind of tricky. You got to just put those on kind of really closely and you got to, the spine here, this part that sticks out, you got to slowly just kind of work this around both edges so it sticks really good or this thing's going to come up and not stick down where you want it and work out as you go around all the little air bubbles until that little piece sticks down there and then the other side so just slowly work it so there's no bubbles or no creases or anything in it all the way around you can see that it ended up long here so we can that's meant to wrap over across the top so our black doesn't show through we're just kind of working that right and this piece here I don't want that hanging over the edge so I'm just going to slice off this little piece here And that way I don't have it overlapping very much. You can still see my little black line there of the hood showing through. So that's how you do a spine piece, like a spine piece right there and a spine piece there. You gotta work those in really good, slowly from the middle down each side so you don't get any wrinkles or any air bubbles in it. Okay, now I have a few pieces of blue left that says hood, like this little piece here. I'm not sure where it goes. So if I find it on my map, so here's my hood piece right here, my hood piece on my map. If I come over here, that's number 14. And if I trace number 14 over here, that shows that little piece right there. So, okay, and now I know where those go. So, this is such a great little map system they have with DV and Ink to help you know where stuff goes. Otherwise, some of this stuff, I wouldn't be able to figure it out. Like these pieces right here that are still bl blue, supposed to go on your hood, but it's intermixed with some of the other pieces. If I come over here, right here, that's number 23. So number 23, if I come over here, I find number 23, and that's the edge of my left side of my hood right there. So we know where both those pieces go. So let's go, we'll put those on. That pretty much wraps up our hood, I believe. Okay, hood's completely done. Every sticker on. I mean, the hood really is the most intricate part of this. It's probably gonna take the most time. This took the two of us almost 45 minutes to lay all these stickers on. It seems kind of crazy that it takes that long, but once you have everything in place, before you really heat this and stick them down where they're supposed to be, you really can peel them back up and re readjust them if you need to. So the last thing it says in the directions to do is this last part heat. This is going to be the thing that really sets these in place. Is going to keep them from coming off and not bubbling up. Is you want to go through every single one, heat a little bit, and just push it down really good into place. This will help you any low high places any wrinkles or ripples you have in it, you can work those out of it. And this is gonna help it stick down and really stay in place really well if you go and do a post heat cycle on it over the whole wrap. And you don't wanna do this until you're sure everything is in place where you want it to be. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna post heat this whole thing, get everything stuck down where we want it. And then we're gonna do the side panels. Now, side panels, you gotta really decide where to start. For some reason, I like starting the bottom on the big flat places and working my way up. If you have this on a sled, it might be better to start at the top and work your way down, but you just have to decide where you want to start. And then pick your first piece. And I'm going to pick this. This has got to fold down around all these edges, so this is kind of a really important piece to get in. So I'm going to start with this corner here and just kind of put that down right there where it goes. And then I'm going to try and line up that corner. I look straight down on it. So I got that corner and that corner right where you want them. And I don't want to lay the whole thing down at once because I want to work out any air that's in it. I'm just going to work myself to the corner. I'm not going to put these flaps down yet until I get... I'm just going to slowly work with my thumb this side here. Just to, you don't want any air bubbles in that. So what's going to happen, I'm putting this wrap on at 4,000 feet of elevation where my house is. When I go up in elevation, the air that gets trapped under here is going to make the air bubble bigger because as I go up the air pressure outside is less than the air pressure in the bubble so it's going to expand that bubble and it could tear or crack my wraps. So I want to make sure you don't get any bubbles in there. And I'm just going to kind of slowly, if you need to put a little heat on this to wrap it down so you don't get any wrinkles in it, but if you kind of slowly just wrap it and work it with your thumb, you can get everything down. And now I'm just going to do this one. I'm getting a little wrinkle right there, so I might have to heat this a little bit right here to work. You just keep working it with your thumb and work. See, I'm, I, get, I have wrinkles there, but you can work those out 
as you slowly go down the edge. Now I'm to the really um, harder edge. I'm gonna slowly work those over. And probably what I'm gonna do, put a little heat on it because I'm getting a little bit more wrinkling than I like. I'm gonna hold that up. Just put a little bit of heat on it. Not, you don't wanna heat it a lot. Just enough to work, easier work those wrinkles out and get everything to fold down where you want it. Probably put some a little bit more heat on this just to So you got one little wrinkle right here. We're going to try and work that out with just a little heat and press that down. Okay, so got everything out of it. Now the last place we're going to come up here and do the same thing. Just work all those corners down just like that. You just got to be careful here. Otherwise you get those wrinkles in it and you got to work those out. All right, so that's a pretty tough piece to put in because there's so many different surfaces on it. You got to work it around there and work out any wrinkles you might get in it and then put that down just like that so nice and flat no air bubbles no wrinkles all around my edges that i push down all right now we're going to do the rest of these put these on um, they'll all go on the same way the top spot is going to be on this one since we have a nice flat panel here we're going to have to really be careful working it into this lower edge here so we don't get any tenting in there so we don't get any air in there and any cracking of our wrap later on so that's going to be a tough spot right there and right there just to get those worked in and not get air bubbles under it there's another way you can put down these big broad ones without unsticking the whole sticker so what i'm going to do i'm going to cut this one out of the wrap so it has the backing on it this is a trick i learned i think when i did my first wrap and only having so those pieces are going to stick down right here and it's going to be hard to get that in place without having to mess with it so i'm going to just going to cut the edges so it's really more cut to shape just down where the factory cut is okay now this is a trick i learned instead of taking the whole back off you can just take a piece of it so I'm going to do, I'm just going to unstick the, the middle of this like that so I have a little, a little bit of it off. And I'm just going to take this, cut that paper off, and I'm going to take out about maybe an inch or less of paper. So I have a, a little bit to stick down. That way I can place this thing right where I want it. Right where it's going to stick, exactly where I want it. And then I can just press in that sticker where I've taken the sticker off just like that. And then I can unpeel this top part. I can kind of slowly just work that down with my thumb, but you can see I'm already running into a problem because this sticker's right where it's supposed to be, but my lines don't quite match up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this off a little bit, and I want to try and maneuver this so my lines right here match up a little bit better so it looks more like where it's supposed to. Trying not to get any air bubbles. And then this part, since it's a little bit short, I'm going to heat this so it fits around the corner a little bit better. Just so it fits up around this corner, just like that. And that is good. So that's really nice. That was easier than like putting this in place like I did having the whole sticker off. If I would have done this by cutting a little bit of this backing paper off, it might have been a little easier putting that one in. That way I can get my lines lined up right there. Now I just pull this part off. I can kind of just slowly work this in. I don't know if that technique has a name, but I'll probably use it on most of this, on this big piece here and probably this big piece here. Probably just cut the middle out of the paper right here so I can lay that side down and then lay this side down. And uh, I think we'll just go about, though that's the biggest secret on laying these big pieces down is just cutting out that little piece on the back side and sticking it down where you want it. That way you can maneuver it and replace it without having all the sticker exposed and having all the parts stick down. So we're gonna start doing this. We're gonna get the rest of the side panels done. Then we're gonna go install the hood and the side panels.
put in side panels about an hour and 45 minutes for two of us. I mean, time intensive, but that wrap is going to stay on there, stay looking good for quite a while. But we still have a lot of work to do. Um, there's a lot of intricacies. We've got to put stickers down in here and then all the stickers on the back part. But the hood and the side panels are definitely the most difficult parts. There's just so many little stickers, so just so many little corners. And uh, so we're going to come back and do the rest of this. Okay, now we're a new day installing the rest of the wrap. Um, I've got everything set up in the garage. I've got my couple of propane garage heaters in here um, to warm things up since we're going to be doing all the tunnel stuff and I can't bring my snowmobile inside. But we've got the hood on like we showed you last in the last video. Uh, got all of our stuff lined up on our a couple of tables here, our heat gun, everything out where we want it. Um, it's, it's pretty warm in here. I bet you it's over 70 degrees now. So um, looking really nice. There's a few things I wanted to go over before we start this. I like to take off all the factory stickers, even the reflectors here, a couple stickers back here on the tunnel. I'm gonna take all these off. Anything that, this, that the wrap I want to go under, even the rear bumper I'm gonna take off as it goes around the sides. So I'll probably have an aftermarket bumper on. I don't wanna cut it to go onto the factory bumper. So I'm just gonna take the bumper off. The stock front bumper is probably not gonna get in the way, but if you have a front bumper like this one that comes around the front here, probably wanna take that bumper off because you're gonna have some graphics that go around that. And so um, just not a bad idea to take off both your bumpers and any factory graphics that are anywhere. And then the last thing are the stickers down here on the side. On most sleds right in the side here is your serial number that's engraved into your tunnel. We're actually going to cut a hole for that because in a lot of states, if you sell your sled out of state, the police um, will need to come and verify that your title matches your VIN before they'll register it. Uh, I know that's that way in Utah, other states I'm not so sure. So. We're going to cut that little hole out so you can see that so you don't have to pull the wrap back in order to see the VIN number. So anyway, we're going to get this. We're going to take all the extra stuff off this so we don't want the stickers going over. And then we're going to finish wrapping this here in the garage. Okay, now most of the rest of this is pretty simple. Big, flat, broad pieces where they can just go and then you can heat treat them to fit into the big spots. A couple really tough parts are anywhere where there's a low or a high spot, like you've got these bumps in the tunnel here. You have to get all the way around those without getting air bubbles in. The tunnel's got some too, but the tunnel's also got rivets. And the other thing is you want to make sure you center your tunnel piece exactly where it's supposed to go. You don't want it off to one side or another. And what I've done is I've measured my tunnel piece right in the center. I put just a little mark there and a little mark back here so I know where the center is. And then I measured the center of my tunnel there. So when I put this down, I can put it down right in the center. Now I've gone to the back side of this and I was going to cut out just the center part of this. So I can place the center first, and then I'm going to place one side and then the other side. Okay, now the back of this, right here, it's square. And right here, you have your little triangles that are going to fit in your tunnel here. So we're going to put, we're just going to lay that right there so our marks line up there. And we'll kind of stretch it to the back to where, where our marks line up right here in the back. And our corners fit right here. And we're just going to kind of press down the center section. And then we're going to go from just one side to the other. So we're going to do this. We're going to pull this guy back. And you're going to want, for this part, you're definitely going to want your heat gun available because you've got to heat around these low and high spots in the rivets to get the wrap to fit down like it's supposed to without getting a bubble in it. You can see right here we're already starting to get a rivet to pop through. So we're just going to heat that a little bit like that and then we just work all the air out around that rivet like that and we'll heat it a little bit more just to just to get it to fit all the way down around that rivet so you don't have to worry about getting any air pockets in there okay so then we're just going to start working our way this direction towards the other side and we've got a couple more rivets back here in the back but we'll worry about those towards the end then once we start getting to the high spots, we're going to just, I'm going to heat those just so it molds down into those spots better. And then we've got to get around another rivet here. And I need to pull that up because it got some air under it. So I need to get the air out from underneath that rivet. Otherwise it's going to, so all the way around that rivet, you want to get all your air out as best you can. And then you can start working. We'll come back and get that rivet in a minute, but. We'll start just working our way over to the edge here. Got a little air bubble there, so I'm going to pull this back. And 
we're just going to heat this edge where we have a, our edges over here and just work our slowly from the top here to the bottom here. The low spots that are formed into the tunnel. Now we've got another rivet. There and there, we've got to get those two things. We're just going to get that so we can push it down into that rivet real good so it sticks and get all that air out. This will help just help mold it into those spots that were high and low spots on our tunnel that were factory formed to give the tunnel some strength. And then we're getting over here real close to the edge where we just got a one more rivet over here and hit that again so we can press that down in to the low spots and just really get that in the good. All right, so that's one side done. We'll do the same thing on the other side. We'll lay that side down and then we'll come back and we'll put our side panel on so all these edges line up. Okay, now the last big piece we got to put on is the piece for the tunnel piece. And that's probably one of the most difficult pieces because it's so enormous. So we're gonna cut this out exactly Place this right here, do this front half, and then we'll probably maybe split it about right here, do the front part, and then we'll go back and do the back part. So to do that, we're gonna do our little trick where we pull off part of the wrap and then we're gonna place it on here and we will work the front side in, um, cut out our little hole for the VIN number and then work the back side in. All right, so we're going to go and place this kind of about where we think it's going to need to be. We'll line up this front edge first because that's going to be the easiest and we'll work it back to where our sticky part is. We're going to pull this part off the front part of it. We want our heat gun down here where we can work with it. See, so we got this part here that pokes out on the tunnel we need to work around. I'm going to heat that so we can really press it into those grooves there and get that started. Then we'll just slowly work our way from the back to the front. Just going to heat up the edge of our part where the tunnel sticks out a little bit just to work all the bubbles out of it and work it around that edge. Okay, we're almost to where our VIN number is. So I'm just going to cut where my VIN number starts. And then we're just going to keep working this down along this flat surface. And when we get to the end of the VIN number, it's going to cut another, another little slice in it. That way I know where my VIN number is going to be and I can cut out that area. So I have a rivet right here. We're going to work that rivet in. Try and get all the air out from under it. Have the rivet down here. You don't want to heat your plastic up too much because then it will stretch or melt or deform way more than you want it to. You don't want it to deform, you just want it to heat enough that you can get it to go over the rivets and form around it and try and get all the air bubbles out that you can. All right, since I know where the two edges of my VIN number are, you're gonna come down here on the one top edge and the other edge and just cut out the little, I know exactly where it is. Go to sell the sled and someone wants to verify the VIN number all right, so you can see down here we worked all of our rivets. Got all the air out from behind those rivets and then we're gonna work this top edge over back to, oh, there's one more rivet there that I didn't get, but I'm just gonna show you this uh, little hole I made for my VIN number. 
see there's my VIN number right there poking through. I can put that back down. Anyone ever needs to verify the VIN, I know exactly where it is and I don't have to pull the whole wrap off to, to get to it. So we're going to go back. We're going to work the back side back here the same way we did this front. Get this on and we're, we're pretty much done with this. We got a few little odds and ends to uh, put on it, but uh, it's looking super sharp. I'm, all right, wrap is all done. Pretty amazing. I think it took... I will say probably between five and six hours. I mean, there's a whole bunch of intricacy on the gauge pad, pad up here, the hood, the side panels, it took a long time. Once you got from the side panel here back, these are all big pieces and they're all pretty simple and easy to put on. Although this on the side of the tunnel is a little tricky to get on. I still need to install my rear bumper. One of the things I didn't really quite show you that I use for this that comes in handy is when you're putting on the little things, you got to go into corners. So if you have a little corner like this, and you're trying to stick everything. It's nice to have a little, um, I don't even know what you call it, a squeegee or something to kind of, and this has different shapes on it. You can kind of just push it down in those corners to help get the bubbles out. Or other corners, like if you're down into here, trying to get stuff in, or there's like this little groove right here, trying to push that down in the groove when you heat it up and just kind of push that in like that. It's nice to have a couple of those things to push in to get the air bubbles out. Um, so I have to say thanks for Deviant Ink. A fabulous wrap. Even though it's fairly intricate on the front part, easy to put on. The map was easily laid out so I could figure out where all the parts went. And uh, it was really a straightforward process. Although it just, it's, it, you have to have patience. You have to just want to make every piece perfect and get all the air bubbles out and get every piece to fit in the little nooks and crannies that's got to go in. So you got to be patient when you're putting in a wrap, especially for your first couple of times. And let's take a look at this wrap now. It looks super awesome. I'm really glad I did the metal flake on it. Really a pretty cool wrap. I just never knew what this was going to look like. You know, it just, I couldn't get a quite a good feel for it. It looked like it was going to be good. Another really cool thing is all these stickers that go here on your snow flap. Um, a lot of other wrap companies don't have the detail that this, that Deviant Ink has, which is really super cool. I wasn't even expecting this. I, I saw these stickers left over. I'm like, what the heck did those go to? I don't even know where those go. And then I got looking, I'm like, no way they go on the snow flap. So super cool. And the detail and the design on this is really awesome. Like I said before, I haven't seen another wrap website where you can enter your own logos right on the website on the app without having to call them or do some special things over the phone or with emails. Awesome work, Deviant Inc. I really like it. I was able to add my TKI logos, a few other things, um, SLP, Climb, and some of the just the great products that I use, a little matrix sticker across there. And a lot of this, the little things I added, um, my little chaos like right up through here, and then my Polaris turned out. I'm just turned out so much better than I was expecting when I ordered it. Um, just super awesome. So hope this helps you be able to install your own wrap. Just make sure when you go to install your own wrap, you have a lot of time. You have a nice warm shop. I mean, I've had, had that propane heater and that one over there going for five hours now as I finished putting all this stuff on in here. And it's, it's probably, I bet, 75 degrees in here, so it's like perfect temperature for doing this. Reach out to and Eek if you want to wrap. Super awesome, highly recommend them. It was uh, a really awesome wrap to put on, just well done on their part as far as look where all the things go. And it's gonna be great to have this machine out in the snow this year. Um, this is the one with their SLP 1.5 kit. Do some more testing on it over the next couple of weeks, and then probably go take this or our other test sled and put twins on it and compare the two. Uh, side by side since the rest of the sleds are the same. So uh, tune in for those coming between now and probably January sometime. We'll put um, twin pipes on the one and compare it how much of an improvement they are over the 1.5 kit. So stay tuned for future Mountain Slitter Garage episodes. I've got a lot of cool stuff coming up this winter and uh, we'll see you next time on Mountain Slitter Garage. Mm -hmm.